Hi everyone, my name is Yo-Yo. I'm a PPEist at Merchant College Oxford. I scored 111.3 on my TSA, a perfect score, and I'd like to share with you how you can do so as well. The TSA stands for the Thinking Skills Assessment. It's written by Cambridge Assessment, but it's used by the University of Oxford to assist in the admissions process. Thousands of people apply for certain courses every year, most notably E&M as well as PPE. And um, admissions tutors are looking for an additional way to assess students beyond your grades, beyond sort of what's already on paper. They want to be able to see like, how does this person stack up against others? How, do, you know, how well will they do at what is a very thinking intensive course, um, you know, which, which definitely describes PPE and E&M and the rest of the courses that require uh, the TSA. So they've come up with the TSA Oxford. It's a uh, 50 question exam. You do it in 90 minutes. There's definitely time pressure involved. And, you know, they're trying to see how fast and how quick on your feet you can think. Um, and it's, it's administered every November. The reason why the TSA is critical, and I, I can't stress that enough, it's one of the most important components of your application, if not the most important, um, is because it's used to determine who they interview and who they don't interview. So out of all the candidates, they interview approximately 2.5 candidates per place. So if there were, let's say, 10 places for PPE available at a college, then they'd interview 25 people. 10 of those people get an offer, 15 of them would not get an offer. Um, and to, de to determine who even gets interviewed, not who gets an offer, but who gets interviewed, they rely primarily and most heavily on the TSA score. It works both ways. If you get a really good score on the TSA, you have pretty much guaranteed yourself uh, an interview. As long as your grades don't look that bad and nothing else about your application is sort of off and incorrect or disqualifying, should I say, um, then you're fine. You will get an interview. If you're in the middle, then they're going to look at other things like teacher recommendations, maybe your personal statements, maybe your grades. And if you're on the low end, then the only thing that can save you is potentially a very strong recommendation, very strong grades, extenuating circumstances, or contextual information. So you don't want to necessarily rely on that. You want to get a strong TSA score. Uh, the TSA score actually is also used after the first interview. So after the first interview, when they're determining who to call back for second interviews, um, which is sort of a second chance for certain applicants to receive offers and places at the university, um, part of the numerical sort of um, uh, part of the numerical calculation that is processed involves your TSA score. So you really want to get a high score because that score is factored into your interview scores later and it's all important down the line. So this is really an opportunity for you to show off how well you can prepare for an exam and show off how well you can do at a standardized assessment. There is no point in paying for TSA tutoring. And I say that um, because one, uh, there is no holy grail to be found. There's no secret holy grail, big secret that someone can sell you and overnight you get good at the TSA. So you can buy as many of these workbooks, guides, um, you know, how-to manuals, whatever it is, and I don't think it's gonna really help you significantly. That's coming from someone who didn't rely on any of these materials myself, and like I said, I got a perfect score. I think um, I, I, I think I did just fine. Um, a couple friends and I have actually attempted to make this process more accessible. We've put together, and we're currently, we're still hosting, we actually just did it this morning, we're hosting a free workshop series telling people how to do the TSA. So I recommend you check that series out. We are very comprehensive with it. We're still talking about it, by the way. Um, we go over the uh, structure of the exam. We talk about the critical thinking questions. We talk about the problem solving questions. Um, and there's nothing else to be said about the exam. You know, we go so in depth with our guidance that I can't see how a paid service could offer anything more. Does that make sense? Um, like, why would you pay to hear stuff that we are already telling you? Uh, there's there's no new information. The 
resources are out there. I encourage you guys to watch the workshops that we've put out. We put a lot of time and effort into those. Um, and uh, I'll briefly explain in the next part of this video um, why our workshops are a little bit different from the existing videos that you go and see on YouTube now. We are focused on the theory behind the exam. And what I mean by that is, for example, the videos on YouTube now, they're teaching you to, to fly a plane in the sense of turn left, turn right, go forward, pull up, right? They're not really telling you why, why things are happening, right? Why is the question written like this? Why, you know, why do we see some patterns? Like wh what patterns do we see? How can we better solve this specific type of question? They're not really going into the theory behind it. We're trying to teach you the physics behind flying the plane, right? We're trying to teach you why air moves the way it does. We're trying to help you understand the method behind the madness that is apparently the TSA. The TSA has structure and it has patterns. And the reason why some people don't do too well on the exam is because they don't realize that. And they don't realize that, for example, in the critical thinking section, the wordy problems, there's only seven types of questions. There are uh, four identify the main conclusion questions, and then the rest of them fall under six other types of questions. And it's so consistent year to year. Obviously, the passages are different. So for example, one year, the, the question could be about polar bears, and the next year is about computers. But does it matter? What matters is how you're able to analyze the structure of the question to see what it's really trying to ask you, and then applying a tested and developed strategy that you have figured out from watching our videos and applying that to any question, no matter what year, what context, whatever it may be, um, that's how you become a TSA master. Again, by understanding the structure, the, the secret in the pudding, right? Like why things work. You don't want to just say, oh, well, uh, I think I know the patterns behind the TSA questions. I, I think I'm seeing these questions about the, the conclusion or identify the flaw a lot, you want to go in and really understand the seven types of questions. Before you take the exam, ask yourself, do you know the seven types of questions of critical thinking off the top of your head? And if the answer is no, then you are sabotaging yourself, right? The test examiners, the people who write the test, they are giving you free information. They're telling you, hey, we're going to write the exam again this year, and we're going to write it based on these seven question types, at least for critical thinking. And if you're not going to listen to them and you're not going to practice the free, you know, based on the free information they're giving you, uh, then what's the point of practicing to begin with, right? So that's why I discourage people from simply doing question after question, right? Um, the TSA getting good at it is definitely, and trust me, it's definitely not based on quantity, okay? Because you can do all the past papers, you can start memorizing the past papers, but unless you understand why the answer is what it is, you're not going to, actually moving even beyond that, it's not just about understanding why the answer is what it is, it's understanding why the question was written that way to begin with, right? Like. Do you understand what I mean? It's like moving from the first dimension to the third dimension, right? Like how, how can you step up your understanding of the question beyond what is written on the paper? There's the English on the paper, and then there was the thinking that went into writing that question. That's what you want to understand. It sounds obscure. We have spent eight hours going over it so far in the workshops, and the workshops are free. We're not charging you for them. There's no catch. Just go watch them. I want you guys to do well on the TSA. I think I think it's super easy. Um, it just takes practice. And I'm still learning as well, right? Like I thought I thought I had the TSA mastered, but I'm still learning. I'm always learning because when I've been co-hosting these workshops with my friends, we've been talking about it over and over again and we're teaching it to other people. And we're learning from each other. We're learning from the applicants who have very interesting ways of solving these questions. And that's helped me refine my strategy. And even though I'm not necessarily getting more critical thinking questions correct, I'm solving them twice as fast now. I used to take like maybe 60 seconds per question. Now I'm doing 30 seconds per question. And if you can save 
even 30 seconds per critical thinking question over 25 questions you're saving yourself uh how many is that like 12 13 minutes right so um that's precious time that you can use to go solve other questions like problem solving questions where you may be less confident in them so it's all about understanding the structure understanding um, the seven question types behind critical thinking and being able to apply it consistently in a rigorous way, right? Not just to one year's exam, but across all the past papers. Find trends that work for you. Find what applies to all papers over all the years, and that's how you become a TSA master. So anyways, if you want to master the TSA, go watch our workshops because they're free. They are hosted by volunteer Oxford students. Uh, there's another guy on there that also got a perfect score, and he'll help you explain exactly what needs to be done. Um, the exam is unbelievably predictable after you've mastered the theory behind it. And in workshops one and two, we go over the critical thinking theory. And in workshop three, we go over problem solving theories. And if you are able to recite the seven types of critical thinking questions and the individual strategies you've identified to solve each question, the strategies that work for you, that's when you've achieved some sort of mastery, some degree of mastery of the questions. And after that, then you can apply those techniques and theories that you've identified to past papers, to videos you're watching and things like that. And that's when you're actually learning. Otherwise, you're just solving questions. You're not learning anything. So anyways, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below or contact me directly by email. I'm more than happy to help, as are the rest of our hosts who um, are reachable um, at any time as well. So uh, best of luck, everyone, and um, hope everyone gets a great score on the TSA.